young people of Jamaica, young people of all the schools gathered here, what do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Talk up youth about reparatory justice. History is the landmark by which we are directed into the true course of life. You see how exciting history can be. Put up your hands if you're going to go back to your school and demand history education. Come on, talk up youth, as Empress Golding would say. Denial of history education is a crime against you, young people, and you must lobby the Ministry of Education to, and your schools to insist that you have access to this knowledge. It must be mandatory, yes. Welcome, Maxine Stowe. Welcome, Empress. I now call on Mr. Chevron Lewis, who is the head boy of Kingston College, to give a student's response. Welcome him, welcome him. Master of Ceremony, Professor Shefford, Principal of Kingston College, Dave Murray, Casey Old Boy President, Professor Dr. Dallas, sorry, Dr. Dallas, members of the Rastafarian family, members of the diplomatic corps, members of parliament, Mike Henry, members of the student body, students, teachers, guests, good morning. I must admit, at first, when invited to do this presentation, I knew, none, I knew, not, I knew nothing about preparation. I took the time out to read the book in front of us, Britain's Black Debt, to get a look at information and listen to Professor Becker's presentation. I've learned a lot, a lot to talk about in the space of just five minutes, such as criminal enrichment. Criminal, criminal, crim, criminal enrichment has to do with the royal family, the elite family, and the British government. I learned about genocide, about the 1.2 million persons in Jamaica and the children that was leave after the massacre has happened. I've learned about Britain refusing to give an apology and which we demand on. I go on in saying, the volume of Caribbean economic history argues the case of preparation from Britain on the basis of the world created from exploitation of enslaved African laborers and native genocide, as well as enduring negative influence on the region. Professor Beckles make remarks using the fact that Britain paid confrontation to slave plantation owners in 1834 on the eve of the abolition of slavery. Slavery regarded enslaved Africans and indigenous people to the status of non-persons or property with no right to life. The case is also being made on behalf of indigenous population to, of the region and genocidal wars that were conducted against them. As I was looking further into Professor Beckel's work and book, I was amazed. It was an eye-opening experience. Don Butler, Member of Parliament, House of Commons, 20th of March, 2007, quoted, Slavery was not just an event. It was a process of de-establishing African society. It produced negative self-image and African deculturalization and demolished all things black and all things African. Reparation is the replenishment of previously inflicted loss by criminals to the victim. In this case, we see the Caribbean and African society being the victim and Britain and the European countries being the aggressor. Professor Beckel book informs us about international law, the UN, showing crime against humanity. Article 55C of the United Nations Charters read, the UN shall promote universal respect for all observation of human rights, fundamental freedom, without the distinction of age, race, religion, or language. Genocide is the deliberate killing, large, the deliberate large killing of a group of people, especially those of a particular nation or ethnic group. We see here in this, in this presentation where Professor Beckel pointed out the Zong massacre. Pointing out Beckel's work compared to other work of this nature was different. Correct me if I'm wrong, 
but professor not only focus on repatriation, but the native genocide, which may or may not be unfamiliar territory for us. As most of us will all know, the European Holocaust, like black, in the colonial period, Jews are identified as legal programs as a specific group of people. Capitalism and slavery, Professor Beckles, for the first time ever, showed me that Britain was not just built on the wealth that they received from the sugar plantation in the Caribbean, but also from blacks. Africans were taken to the European continent to work in factories, enslaving them to hard labor, brainwash, I call it. As a set, as a set state of mind, the white were superior beings. In other words, Britain was built with slavery, criminal enrichment. In closing, I ask, is reparation still evident in modern society? Answer with a quote from Anglaso, all components and huge disparities in wealth, unfair trading, rules with every protectionist policy and exploitation of labor without the protection were present to permit slavery on the industrial scale. Until we tackle those of injustice, we will not see an end to modern day slavery. We must examine the things we need to do to change if we are to truly give everyone freedom. How can us, how can we as young person help representation or the aim of repatriation to repair some of the armed cause, to reintegrate young persons back into the community, to raise public awareness, to raise public confidence, to promoting the reoffending of this, to learn new skills, to increase the motivation and raise self-esteem. I think I speak for everyone in thanking Professor Beckles for this inform informative information given here today. It was eye open. It opened our eyes to a new perspective of reparation and native genocide. Professor Beckles, on behalf of Kingston College and members present today, we salute you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sure, as he said, he speaks for all the schools here. And I welcome all the schools who joined after I gave the initial welcome. And there's something you can do. I challenge you today. I don't know which school will take up this responsibility. We need a national youth debate on reparation. And somebody here can organize that. And you can also help us by filling out the questionnaires that you have been given because we need to send a message to our policymakers, and your thoughts will help the National Commission on Reparation to send that thought to our parliamentarians on the issue of reparation. It's a very important questionnaire. Help us by filling it out. You know, Professor Beckles, I am normally a law-abiding person, but I behaved badly at least twice in my life. And one of those occasions was visiting Harewood House in Leeds. My brother lived in Leeds for 30 years, and when I visited, when I was studying at the University of Cambridge, he said, you have to see this place. And then when I went, they said I had to pay to get in, and I said, no. I will just admire it from outside. It should be, Jamaicans should go in free. What do you think? And the second occasion was at Elmina, the so-called Elmina Castle in Ghana, when they were telling me as a diaspora an African, a displaced African coming back to connect with my roots, I must pay to go in to the barracoon. I said, no, I will stay outside and buy fabric, which I did. And your friend Elise Sumoni came out with me and said, I will come and keep you company because I know how you feel. And then they were playing Bob Marley and I just started to ball. And that's, that's the power of the history that we have. So it's your time to talk of youth. I don't know how you're going to manage this, organizers. Are they going to line up behind, um, by the mic in the passage? We have half an hour for questions and answers. We'll take a few, and because Prof has to leave uh, in half an hour's time. So who will start the Q&A? While you're lining up there, let me ask a question. And there'll be a book for you if you can answer this question. Anybody in the audience, who can tell me where there is a monument to the victims of this song in Jamaica? Who, 
Well, you have to run up and tell me. Run up and, who is the first person to run up and ha <laughs> We have a competition here. And I'm going to ask MP Mike Henry to present the book, courtesy of the Jamaica National Commission. It is a book from the press. Linda, we will pay for it. So somebody from the press, if you could take up one of those books, Mike Henry will hand it to you. So tell me how you know that. Uh, it's in Black River. Yeah. And I know it, I know it because... I'm from St. Elizabeth. <laughs> okay, so there is your. And can you tell me when it was established? Well, you're not quite right about that, but you haven't done history, so we'll forgive you. It's 2007 during the bicycle. Turn, oh, who, who, oh, the camera is there, so that's fine. So, 2007 during the bicentennial. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Yes, uh, Mr. Henry, I'm asking um, Mr. Beckles noted that um, it said that the British should be able to that that we are not that we're reporting on that. Um, I'm asking Mr. Mike, Mike Henry, why is it that we should should implement that we don't import? Um, so I'm saying that instead of that, as Jamaicans, we should be able to know that. Um, let me congratulate KC, let me congratulate the Reparations Committee, and congratulate everyone for bringing this young gathering together. If I may impose on the few minutes by that question. For 40 years of my political life, I should have greeted you in the name of Jarastafari. For 40 years of my political life, I have fought for reparations. I will embrace this opportunity very briefly by saying what Professor Beckles has done is I guess the thing coming along at the right time and the right moment in a collective approach. So I think I should say to you that there has never been a political decision by any parliament that I know of in the Caribbean that says we are demanding the rights on behalf of the people for reparations. Therefore. The position in Jamaica, which I will summarize very briefly, is that I'm demanding a vote from Parliament that that 20 million pounds that was paid be now paid to the slaves to the equal value of today's money. Without a political decision, you cannot go to the International Court of Justice. What Professor Beckles have presented is history and truth. And I thought, therefore, for the young people here, I need your support. I've reopened the debate for a vote on reparations. That debate was opened two weeks ago and will continue right after the financial debate. 